So hey everybody, uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I'm your host, Brett Fogel with Moonstream Crypto, and uh, we're going to dive in. I've got my Bitcoin hat on here because, uh, wow, Bitcoin over 72,000 earlier in the week. Uh, currently, it's uh, 71,500. Pulled back a little bit, not uh, terribly surprising there. We're going to unpack some of that in the charts also. So let's go uh, dive into the news and get through the news here, and then we'll dive into the uh, oh, what else is going on in the world of crypto. So uh, with that, I'm going to pull this down and do this and make sure the chat is up so I can see you guys and I'll answer questions as we go if we need to. So uh, just at a high level, I had another article here. Uh, where did the other news I had queued up go? So I think this is what I wanted to start with. And then this one I was going to drop right in there. Okay, cool. So on Cointelegraph here today, I'm reporting that Bitcoin has six months until ETF liquidity crisis. So this is some new news we want to have a look at, and uh, we'll unpack this together. So he's basically saying that the BTS, uh, EFTs, Bitcoin ETFs, we might as well call them the BETFs, so why not, are sucking up uh, B uh, Bitcoin available for purchase and the tipping point on supply. You know, we've been talking about that and the upcoming supply shock and the factors that will contribute to that. I actually have that pulled up in another window. So we will also look at this, which is those 10 reasons that could lead toward a massive run on Bitcoin, one of them, and um, many of them leading toward the supply shortage and a demand surge. So we'll uh, we'll come back, we'll get to that. So, all right, so let's talk about the six months till ETF liquidity crisis. This is uh, some new commentary that I haven't seen before. And it says that the Bitcoin bears can't win while the ETF flows continue. You know, that certainly has been the case. And, um, you know, I did think that we would pull back. We had that brief pullback on the Monday or the Tuesday after the Monday pump, which, which I had sort of forecast, but immediately gobbled up. And after all the liquidations, which is what market makers do, at those key inflection points and uh, wiping out the longs and shorts, the ETF money just kept driving it higher. There's a famous, um, well, sort of well-known YouTuber that was uh, going on and adding to his short all the way up on full screen. He's been around a while, I won't name names, but uh, what I hear is he got liquidated or he got taken out of that trade because it kept going higher. And that's because as this says, Bitcoin bears can't win while these ETF flows are coming in. And we did put up that slide showing there was something like, well, there was a billion dollars in liquidations in that 24 hour period, most of them on the short side. But what happens when the shorts get wiped out, when the prices push higher, then everyone goes long and then they pull it down and they wipe everybody out there. Uh, they is is sort of an, uh, it's, it's a moving target what they are. It's the AI driven market makers, the whales, and is it all coordinated? Not necessarily, but maybe some of that at the institutional level, certainly on the uh, smaller time frames. Much of the trading I'm hearing, as much as 80% of the trading these days, is by bots and computers. So um, that's great if you're a big hedge fund. Um, I don't, we don't want to be doing that. And we don't do that in the M3 Active Trader class. We're swing traders and catching those mid to longer term swings, which is uh, our sweet spot. You know, rather than going and try to compete with day traders or day trading bots driven by AI. So that's what we do <clears throat> here at Moonstream. And uh, if you'd like to find out more about what we do, and if you're new here, you can check us out at moonstream.io. There's some free stuff at the bottom of the page, including signing up for these classes if you'd like to attend live at the bottom of the page there. So Bitcoin's institutional investment allocation is only just getting started. Yeah, you know, I was watching a clip by Michael Saylor this morning where he was saying that this could be the beginning of a 10-year bull run or gold rush. He thinks this is Bitcoin in 2024 is like the beginning of the gold rush that could last all the way through 2025. So that is very interesting. Will we get another big bear market like we normally do? I do know that a lot of people, many of you have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for the pullback. And that's been the consensus that I've heard from everyone I'm talking to. And except for some of our private clients and many of you in our M3 Active Trader, we've been getting in these markets since October and people are still coming in. And yesterday I had many people reach out and calls and on social media saying, hey, um, even friends saying, hey, when is this pullback gonna happen? And really that surprises me and concerns me because the consensus is wrong as we knew and found out in the last bull cycle where everybody thought we're going to 100,000. Why? 
because that's what everyone was saying. All the media was saying that. And so what do we have this cycle? Everyone's saying the way by the pullback, uh, certainly on the charts, it would have indicated. And I was even saying we're at the top of trend channel. We need to pull back here. But uh, the ETF money, as this article saying, is that it continues to flow in. Uh, I might uh, pull up the chart also, which we are normally look at in our active trader class on Wednesdays. Uh, last week, it was at like 16 billion total uh, total assets under management between BlackRock and Fidelity alone, the majority of BlackRock, but now it's 20 billion. Um, there's bi guys, there's billions of dollars coming into this market. And if you don't realize that when you, a client or somebody, a sales guy at BlackRock Fidelity calls up their clients or they have their whole team of rest, registered investment advisors outreaching to their clients saying, hey, do you want to buy some Bitcoin? And we recommend that. And the client says, sure, here's 100,000 that has to go right into Bitcoin. That's how it works. Money in, money buys Bitcoin on the spot market. And that was the massive difference between the futures ETFs back in the last cycle, which were future or uh, no, were cash settled rather, and it didn't have to go buy Bitcoin. So if that's confusing, you can Google that. But that's why that's why this time really is, is different. And how, when, and this slows down, we just don't know. And uh, so let's see, this is Bitcoin institutional investment only just getting started. I mean, I don't want to rush through this. And uh, I think people are really starting to realize what this means. And uh, it's not to say we won't have pullbacks, but I think they will. I think we'll see lesser pullbacks. Prior cycles, we saw 30, 40, 50 percent pullbacks. We didn't have that billions of dollars of money coming in and you know what happened when the gold ETFs happened it became a more stable asset at least in the shorter term volatility uh, meaning so uh, let's see now they're saying that all of the ETFs have over 30 let's see 30 billion and um, that's surprising because I've Fidelity I won't unpack that too much but Fidelity and BlackRock are the biggest they have 20 so I guess that makes sense another 10 billion from the other players and under assets under management. So this is significant, guys. And I've been talking about, you know, the interview also that Kathy Wood had with her, uh, her partner who runs their ETF and who was just saying, this is about four or five months ago, and she was saying, people just don't realize how much institutional money can come in. We're talking three zeros, trillions of dollars. So we're just getting started, it would seem. Now, I don't want you to feel FOMO from this or that, oh my God, I've missed it and I should go all in right now. Um, you know, the, the prudent way to do this would be to be at least 50% in this market, holding 25% for pullbacks if we get them to dollar cost average but uh, also any breakouts and confirms uh, confirmations on higher prices to have 25% to allocate. This is not financial advice, just to general uh, parameters and what I'm teaching and sharing with private clients, because that way, no matter what happens, if we go higher, you're still in the game and you have some powder dry to buy breakouts. And then eventually we'll see some kind of a dip. And you know, even if that dip takes you lower than current price or is above current prices, it's still the safer way. Because if you were to go all in and then we had that 20, 30% drop on Bitcoin and altcoins would be generally more, you know, that would be a bit of a sting. So that's kind of my general recommendations for how to play this market right now. Now that we're over 70,000, call it 71,000 and holding, and we have a weekly candle close to confirm that, which we'll look at, you know, that means this level is holding and um, it's unlikely it was a fake hat. I was concerned a little bit that we might have a triple top. and uh, But, you know, ETF money, I didn't think that would be the case. All right. So, so this is the article. Uh, this is kind of the headline related to the headline. Should this trend continue, the a new phenomenon could arise where there are not enough Bitcoin available to meet demand. So with that, I'm going to just bring over this uh, chart. And many of you guys have seen this and we keep fine tuning and adding to it. But this is my path to 155K Bitcoin. And uh, how do we get to 100,000 here? Potentially before the halving. These blue lines are a copy of the bars from the prior cycle. Just extended out a little bit because this was post halving where you see see that parabolic rise and right now we I do believe we're seeing a left translated cycle or left skewed cycle where we're seeing the run up ahead of ahead of the having you know people know it's musical chairs if they wait too long there won't be any enough to go around and the ETF approvals was interestingly timed so at any rate <clears throat> pardon me that a number of these uh, seven, these 10 reasons here that could really push the prices higher. Number one, BlackRock Fidelity. Of course, we talked about that. Uh, I won't go into the other ones here. We save that for tomorrow's class, but we are seeing 
um, country uh, corporate accumulation rather. And uh, so uh, MicroStrategy and somebody did notice that a Tesla wallet uh, was uh, also accumulating uh, Bitcoin. So wouldn't be surprised I actually had proposed that and then found out a day later that's what uh, the news was saying. But here's what I wanted to talk about. This less available exchange supply equals demand surge. And so all of these have the ability to sort of inflame the the other and make you know one plus one equals three and forest fires and right so these if all of these start or are smoldering campfires and a couple of them start to flame up there they all could really kind of ignite and um the other one that's sort of brewing still is the BRICS nations uh seeing more and more quietly uh moving toward moving away from the dollar now they're saying they're moving toward a crypto backed currency but still whether it's gold backed or crypto backed it's less demand for dollars which means more supply could lead to hyperinflation so anyway um i'll, I'll there's a study I, I published on this in trading view if you want to go over to uh, brett fogel trading view you can read that and i'm published several reports here or there and uh, many of these have been uh, very good and accurate so um some good uh, resources there. You can search for me online at Brett Fogel over on TradingView and uh, and read some of the um, the studies there. So anyway, I don't want uh, to go through too much of that. Let's get back to the news. And what else do we have? It says bears can't win the game until a spot ETF inflow stops. And that's really the TLDR. Question is, when does it stop? Here's the thing. I have a friend who um, sort of said, don't name names, but his brother went to the BlackRock Investment Summit, kind of where the uh, the team goes and had some, I won't call it inside information, but the word is that BlackRock is going to be allocating a bigger percentage of total investments to Bitcoin. And I heard, don't quote me on this, but I heard 20% potentially have a portfolio uh, that seems awfully high. So I'll, I'll try to confirm that. But um, I'm also hearing that they are suggesting to pull funds from one of their other funds and put it in Bitcoin. And, and so it really seems like uh, this could uh, this could go a lot higher faster. Uh, the study that I shared with you a minute ago puts the cycle highs potentially at 210K, uh, where if we hit 100,000 here in the short term, I think we could. I think we could push right up to sort of 80K this month and then up to 100K next month around the halving. Maybe we see a pullback to retest that 70K level. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, then pushing up to 155K, certainly possible. And by around November of this year, could could go higher. And my cycle high is, is 210,000. But uh, I'm hearing some much bigger numbers ballied about. What I would suggest is um, kind of take that median road. We saw what happened when we were all waiting for, you know, waiting for Bitcoin 100,000. And looking back, it was uh, just based on, it wasn't based on anything. We had our own math of why that could happen, but uh, we should not be tied to an outcome. And one of the benefits of these indicators that we use is that uh, they told us uh, when the market top was. Uh, to the day and to the week so i'll share that with you and uh we can uh, unpack that here in a minute how are we doing on time come back to i want to get through the news so we can get to the charts and uh go from there by the way we have an announcement as well we have some upgraded we have some new pro indicators on the crypto mastery suite of indicators that are really cool hopefully i'll have some time to share those with you and uh because people are really excited all right so let's see noted etfs alone put away thirty thousand bitcoin last week wow you guys that's so many um, that's a three pizzas back in the Bitcoin pizza day. And, and I'm joking, of course, but 30,000 Bitcoin, uh, massive. And, uh, of course, uh, if you haven't heard, Michael Saylor had, uh, and MicroStrategy just floated the, believe a $700 million common stock offering. We've been talking about that for months, uh, when it was first proposed. And, uh, if they did that, and of course that's to guess what, buy more Bitcoin. Um, he, um, he believes really that uh, that you know this is the beginning of the gold rush and and uh, it'll like, demand will continue through that 2024 um, area. You can watch it online somewhere. I didn't get through the whole interview. Um, you know, I tend to kind of average things out though, kind of like Kathy would when I saw Kathy and uh, Michael uh, at Bitcoin 2022 and uh, was up in front row and they were she was, she was saying million dollar Bitcoin by 2030. You know, I I kind of cut that in half. Say, well, maybe maybe half a million. You know, but still, but still, um, look how far we've come. All right, uh, let's see. Three million Bitcoin exchange and minor wallets. The odd of some, yeah. So this is also true that uh, the exchanges. There's three million Bitcoin in exchanges and the minor wallets. So this increases the odds of a supply and demand induced price shock. 
because uh, as coins move off of exchanges and uh, you know in the, the and in the minor wallets, you know of course uh, they sell as little as possible, but they're all about to be selling half as much, right? So uh, they were selling around twelve billion dollars of Bitcoin per year in aggregate. Why to pay for their energy, pay for their miners? And uh, that's all going to be cut in half because they'll only be able to mine half as much after the halving. So sometimes I, I've been seeing more questions online about what is the halving. Uh, and uh, you should go Google that if you're not clear, but that's basically it. So um, I'm not going to go through all of this. This is a cool graphic here, though. ETF miners, listed companies, Tether. So uh, I saw a version of this on Twitter actually earlier today. Um, but this shows essentially that between... Fidelity and um, IBIT, or uh, the BlackRock and Fidelity, who collectively have about, looks like, 325,000 Bitcoin, which is more than MicroStrategy. That's interesting. And, uh, of course, uh, GBTC still has almost 400,000 Bitcoin. and uh, and But the new nine Bitcoin ETFs combined as 400,000, so they have more. And I'm going to assume that includes BlackRock and Fidelity and all of them. It would have to, but so that's kind of double counting. But um, all nine new ETFs now has more than uh, more than GBTC, so that's massive, you guys. So let's see. Um, we we have. Let's see. I don't, I don't know. We need to go through all of this. 1.4 million to go. Yeah. So that's also because uh, through through the end of mining, there's only like 1.4 million Bitcoin mineable, and so that's going to increase supply shock. Uh, most of you are already on the same page and say, "All right, I get it. Let's move on." But um, interesting um, graphics here: accumulation addresses and uh, the price, of course, breaking out here. The total balances on and addresses or yeah, on addresses looks just gone vertical, which I guess is not surprising, but some um, worth noting. And so the trajectory is uh, positive. I did see also Grayscale has filed for a mini spot. Uh, Bitcoin ETF. I think I already have this tab open. So let's see. Oh, look at this. Um, so uh, the Biden regime would like to resurrect 30% crypto mining tax in a new budget proposal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know why they're fighting so hard to stop this thing and uh, squash it or push it back offshore. You know, we had that great gift when China banned Bitcoin mining for the 1100th time. And uh, in that time, they meant it. Well, a lot of those Chinese mining companies came here and they came to the U.S. And so um, now if you're one of those that believes it's bad for the environment, you know, follow Cynthia Loomis because over in her tack, her uh, state, they have been, this is genius, they've been taking the methane and this, the gases created in refining oil and uh, fossil fuels that normally goes up in the atmosphere, they've been funneling that into fuel to burn and to power Bitcoin mining. So it's carbon neutral. Uh, the gas is, uh, side, I, I, I'm understanding, is not uh, contributing to, you know, the big uh, hole in the ozone and all that other stuff. So anyway, but um, yeah, 30% on electricity used by crypto miners. Uh, I mean, I get it. He he spent way too much money in his presidency, so they're looking for ways to get money back, um, like in giving most of it away. Sorry, guys, I'm not going to get into politics, but uh, unbelievable. Uh, you know, hopefully... Um, Hopefully they won't be around very long. I uh, just, uh, but anyway, not, not once again, not, not too many, uh, uh, ideal choices, but at any rate, uh, 30% tax on that. That would be, what would that mean? I mean, that would really hurt the miners. We might see, well, it would just slow the, the demand surge. And in the end, um, uh, it kind of balances out. Won't really affect things for us. I guess that's the uh, bottom line there. At least we won't think so. All right. So uh, let's see. With White House 2025 budget is incredibly bullish on crypto assets. So I do want to pop back over because it's important to keep this on your radar. One of the 10 factors that I've, I have here in this is that uh, we, we're starting to see more politically favorable. Not sure why. Sorry, guys. This for some reason made it onto two monitors there. I got to like size this appropriately. Uh, okay. So basically, um, this one, number nine, political support in favor of Bitcoin and crypto. Certainly a factor that could help. And again, each one of these, a small smoldering campfire, just like uh, California, where one of them or two of them combine, the whole thing goes up in a blaze. Uh, and so, um, uh, and that, not that that's a good thing. So, but in our case, it would be. So let's see, uh, Loomis, private tax. Cynthia Loomis, you know, the point is she's very vocal pro Bitcoin, uh, you know, Senator. And um, I don't know, she, I, I would, I could see her, 
I could see her as a future vice president. I'm just saying uh, it would certainly get the uh, crypto, um, you know, and what are the crypto community behind that president, I would think. Uh, at any rate, Grayscale files, files for mini spot Bitcoin ETF. The new Bitcoin trust could offer investors non-taxable exposure to Bitcoin. That's interesting. Uh, so will it, as a trust, uh, will the ETF, so I'm not sure how the tax, I'm not sure how the taxes are handled with the other ETFs. Do you guys know? Anyone know? Um, that would be interesting. But um, the Grayscale backpedaling because, of course, they had um, billions of dollars leave the Grayscale Bitcoin trust uh, because when the other ETFs came around, People wanted to do redemptions and move over to get the lower fees. Well, they're saying, well, okay, guess what? Now we're going to have a mini ETF with lower fees, which is what I uh, read for that when I skimmed it earlier. I'd never heard of a mini version, but uh, certainly that would make sense. Try to pull some of those people back in. But I honestly, honestly I think probably they've, they've already left. You know, why would they leave and come back? So, okay. Um, 73 days. Yeah. All I want to talk about is 73 days. Uh, are we talking about the having? This is a May. This is the e the e ETF. Let's see. Sponsor fees. A lot of jibber jabber here from Ben Eckert. No worries. All right, let's move on. Uh, Daily Hodl is also talking about. So let's see. Uh, I do want to jump over to Crypto Panic. It usually has some of the more timely news. And uh, so let me just see here. I don't see that much tokenization of blockchain. Kind of still in talks. You know that's going to be really cool. Uh, we do talk about that in our retire rich classes uh, about future of tokenization of securities and uh, real estate, real world assets. That's what RWAs are. So if you hear that, that's real world assets. So basically, you know, um, fractionalization of ownerships. Let's say you wanted to buy part of an art painting. There's a company out there that tokenizes uh, fancy art paintings. And um, that's on the tip of my tongue. But in the future, you'll be able to buy parts of major real estate buildings and as a token. So it'll trade as tokenized real estate and they'll have other, um, that's going to filter in through a lot of our, if not all parts of our society, a little bit early. So let's not get into it, but that is coming. And uh, what's interesting, I'll just as a quick aside, by the way, I was chatting with a guy on Facebook today, um, actually last night, he had a Bitcoin mastermind on St. Martin in 2014. And uh, I, I was invited and what I was commenting to him yesterday is I'm, I was like, some of the things we were hearing about that sounded like science fiction in 2014 are starting to happen, like tokenization. I remember a, we were hearing, so it was Stan and Dan Larimer were there, the founder of EOS, and uh, was somebody was talking about someday you'll be able to send your favorite song to a friend and get paid like a little bit of, of uh, crypto. And we were like, what? Like what kind of, you know, we just couldn't even fathom that or comprehend it. But of course, now we're seeing uh, these kind of things uh, coming up and uh, on the blockchain, smart contracts. And, you know, it's still not there yet, but 10 years, it's finally here. So I told them you were way ahead of your time. Uh, and I blew it. I wish I should have really gone way into that because he said a few of the people there are billionaires now. And I imagine, uh, I think Dan Larimer, uh, I can't remember if Stan or Dan is the, the younger one, but, um, and I can't remember who else were there, but they were like sort of heads of crypto blockchains and things like that. So uh, anyway, better late than never. Uh, and we are still so early. So let's talk about this. Uh, an expected news has arrived for Solana XRP Polygon. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, XRP was finally breaking out. So let's take a look at this, see if there's any important news on that. And uh, let's see, uh, I don't want to go too far on the news because I do want to get to the charts. And let's see, MicroStrategy stock continues to climb. Well, if that's because they're buying all this Bitcoin and it's now a surrogate, it's almost like an ETF um, because they own so much Bitcoin. And Michael said he's never selling. So um, anyway, that's it for the news there. Let's see, expected news has arrived for Solana, XRP, all three good, good projects. And uh, we are bullish on these. I didn't think I would say on XRP, but I, hey, I like the chart. Uh, you know, they won their lawsuit, didn't really, it was a big sort of uh, make it a big, big thud, a big nothing burger, didn't move price. But for some reason, suddenly now it, uh, it's going up. 
Let's see. What does Bill Ackerman say? Billionaire with four point. Uh, always be always be skeptical with this guy. Uh, he's the guy that came on during COVID and say hell is coming. Uh, the markets are going to be completely annihilated. Didn't say didn't say that he was heavily short the market and he made a billion dollars by freaking everybody out. So uh, he's he's you know. Uh, anyway, take it with a grain of salt. Bitcoin has the chance to go forever. Maybe I should buy it. Uh, I don't know if I'm a, if I should be a contrarian with Ackerman or not. He's just uh, he's a slippery character, but uh, he's done done well. Um, all right, uh, we let's unpack this a little bit more. So uh, this is just this is kind of not really news. This is um, keep in mind something, and I want you to hear what I'm saying because I recently heard from some high level people I know uh, what we all suspected that up to 80%, maybe even more of all news is placed. And that means it's either paid media or, um, is highly encouraged by, uh, the powers that be. There's also one of the guys in this closed door meeting was saying, you know, yeah, my wife has to, uh, oftentimes sit on news stories because they're, they're she's told not to, or they're told what to report on. So, um, this is kind of looks like a sponsored uh, promo, nothing against dare bit, but all it's saying is that it's going to list XRP, Solana and Matic big deal. Uh, okay. So, so when you start reading that read between the lines, this uh, seems more like an advertorial, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, we talked about, uh, the, uh, GBTC, uh, spinoff. So that's done. We're making a good time here. You guys, uh, this is so big. Uh, this is, of course is, uh, Michael Saylor saying Bitcoin is going to eat gold. So, um, I think, uh, who it was, uh, there's, I, I haven't watched it yet. There's a debate by Peter Schiff and it might be uh, Michael Saylor on gold versus Bitcoin. That would be interesting to go see. And uh, so, um, because uh, MicroStrategy owner of 205,000 Bitcoin worth nearly 15 billion. That's more than uh, Fidelity and uh, BlackRock combined at this point. So, so he basically is being Michael uh, permable. So that's cool. No worries. And uh, crypto sees record inflows. So, so yeah. So I want to talk about, excuse me, this 80,000 target. There's a, somebody did a study and a pretty, you know, pretty good, um, TA guy that uh, had, had an interesting study. We duplicated it in our M3 Active Trader class, and it's basically showed why uh, and why Bitcoin should top out at eighty thousand this cycle. And the math was compelling, but I just don't think that it's, that's right. I think that's uh, too, it's not going to it's too low. However, uh, we could see a hiccup at eighty thousand. So some of these people are saying analysts flag eighty thousand. There's no other reason really. Although there is a trend line, we'll look at the trend line that also points to 80,000. And so, you know, look, we have to, can't be married to, I mean, I really think 100K, 150K, but um, but we don't know. We have to be aware of our own confirmation bias and be watchful. So that's a good segue into our indicators, which did call the top last time. And to be honest, I didn't want to believe it. And the pie cycle top crossed, and I thought it must be wrong, but um, started looking at some other indicators, including our own. And finally, and by December 2021, I was, was saying, get out of the market. And by January, I was pounding the table to our members to get out of the markets. And we were right. We nailed it. Uh, and so let's see, uh, just real quick, Ethereum layer two skyrockets after earnings surprise. You know, at some point we should see the ETH ETF narrative start to pick up steam. Willy Woo back in the news says Bitcoin now full blown bill market. Uh, gee, no, no kidding. Among supply reduction and spot ETF remedy, but always good to hear from Willie. Let's see, macro guru, Raul Paul, uh, you know, pretty smart guy. He used to work at Goldman, I believe. And so he says unveils massive price target for Solana. Um, I want to see that. I want to see his price target. Uh, you know, I have, I think um, as high as 3,000, but probably in the round of 1,000 to 1,500 for Solana on this run. And uh, just taking a quick look at this here, Stablecoin Studio and Sui. Sui is one we're watching, so I won't uh, get into that just yet. <clears throat> and um, let's see, analyst, another analyst uh, saying, analyst, Bitcoin will drift higher mid generational mindset shifts. Yeah, so this is something also interesting and worth noting is uh, I forget where I, who I heard talking about it, but it, the generation shift, kids or millennials and Gen Zs who are by sort of um, nature, nature, uh, nature's uh, mother nature, I guess, uh, they're losing their parents and inheriting wealth. And uh, often it's in the form of real estate and other things. But uh, this is shifting toward uh, being transferred into uh, crypto and Bitcoin. 
and that's going to continue to uh, switch over and we're seeing that so will that will that impact the real estate markets and cause some, too much supply in real estate i don't know uh, a lot of it's being bought up by, uh, you know, um, uh, hedge funds and things like that. But at any rate, um, so basically that's what he's saying. Generational mindset shift will move. Bitcoin will drift higher because more people will sell inheritances and stocks and bonds and treasury bills and real estate and they'll buy Bitcoin. That's the rally there. So that's that's worth noting, you guys. That's worth noting. Maybe we'll put it on our list. I just didn't want to have more than 10 things on that list. Okay, rallies incoming from Ethereum and one ETH rival. Uh, all right, well, I wonder what the ETH rival is. I want to get through the news here, but um, okay, when new whales began accumulating massive amounts of chain link, uh, that hasn't moved though. I'm just looking at my other computer over there. For some reason, chain link hasn't moved. I, I have a friend who, uh, when chain link hits sixty dollars, he's like, "I'm I'm a millionaire. I'm done." But he's also whining about it's just sitting there not moving. Uh, I do I do still believe Chainlink uh, is a good buy on pullbacks, but I need to sort of hold this twenty dollar level. We are seeing higher lows, but it's got to hold this this level. And um, you know, it might take a little while, but uh, I see that uh, you know that that should that should run. I think that will go to sixty to and then maybe a hundred dollars on uh, Chainlink. So. Um, all right, I think we're we're done here. Um, no more of that. So we've got these two articles to unpack. Raul Paul on Raul Powell unveils massive price target for Solana, and uh, let's see what that target is. So it could soar five two hundred thirty-five to five hundred seventy percent. Um, well, we saw it. We saw that happen last time. I recommended Solana August first, twenty twenty-one, to our newsletter members, and I said, "Watch for a pullback to thirty-five dollars. That's our entry point." It did. Came back to thirty-five, and it just took off like a rocket. And we, some of us, sold it too soon, waiting for the pullback. So the thing with Solana is, uh, with that, I wouldn't really be selling much on the way up because uh, it certainly has that that potential. So uh, it went up 657 percent in 2021. Um, and it's already had a run now. It's doing doing well. So um, could it go, you know, 500 percent from here? Sure. I think so. But he's saying, yeah, so he's saying 500. I would agree with that. 500 uh, on Solana. Certainly doable. And uh, yes, yeah, so here to 500 to 1,000. There's another analyst who basically did the math. This is on the prior cycle, though. And he said, when ETH goes to 15K, if Solana is roughly worth 20% of ETH, that would be the number, 20% of 15K. Let me let somebody in here. So 20% of 15K would be 3,000. But the thing is with the ETH projection, um, ETH is having more competition not clear on the price how they are their new version of the the proof of um work token which is deflationary not sure how that affects prices with the etfs so you just have to keep an eye on that solana's around 150 so yeah i i think it could triple here and go as high as a thousand so we're on the same page and um <clears throat> we're in crypto summer just started crypto summer and crypto summer is up only so uh, at least that has been the past. Be mindful of consensus, though. If everyone's saying something, be wary, be careful. And when your Uber driver starts telling you what his coin picks are, it's time to take some profits off the table. And uh, it's, it's used to be the old taxi cab uh, indicator, uh, that which, which totally worked for me in the 2008 crash, I believe. So let's see, rallies incoming from Ethereal and one ETH rival. Let's just, this will be the last bit of news we do. Uh, Pseudonymous, I don't know why they don't use their real name, uh, is uh, suggesting ETH will go to an all-time high of, well, this is ridiculous, 5,000's in the bag, you guys. It's We're already over 4,000. So this guy's trying to ma make a name for himself. Return, oh, sorry, it will return to the all-time high. Okay, yeah, that's true. But I think it goes past there. I think we hit 5,000 ETH easily. Um, all right, and the ETH rival is Solana. Okay, so that's the big reveal there. We already talked about that. And what is this chart of here, Solana? We have already unpacked that. All right, that's enough of that, guys. Cool, let's look at some charts. Any questions, anyone? Let me pull up the chat here. It looks like you guys are uh, chatty here today. Let's see, uh, which is good. I like to have any uh, a couple questions. Perry says, compared to crypto mining, something that wrecks the environment is having hundreds of millions of people 
building, maintaining, and driving to and through banks. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I haven't heard that before, Perry. Uh, but that's true. It's kind of like all the uh, the fat cats who fly out to Davos uh, on their Learjets to, um, you know, protest the uh, the the what is it, the ozone and the um, ecology environment. Anyway, sorry guys, coffee hasn't quite hit in yet. Uh, Greg says, "What happens to GBT's fund and and if their ETF is approved?" Um, I I think it stays. Greg, there. It sounds to me like they're going to have a mini one, in addition to the GBTC massive one. That's why they called it a mini one. Otherwise, they'd say we'll just convert it over, and then. But they would have too, so much egg on their face, uh, which they should have done in the first place. Maybe uh, will they merge the two together? Don't know. A uh, good question. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. It's probably not. It's not a bad idea to be your own competition. Kind of like Allstate when they bought uh, insurance. Do you remember insurance was this really low cost insurance provider with a cool little cartoon, uh, you know, and it's all online. And so Allstate just said, well, let's buy them. And that way we own the competition and took more, they took more market share in aggregate. Pretty smart, savvy business move. I uh, used to consult business owners and uh, that's one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, we talked about doing a roll up. All right, uh, Perry says, FYI, that most of the other grayscale funds took hits this morning. Almost all went down between 5 and 35%. Uh, not sure why. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, interesting. Uh, if anyone has any news on that or can uh, go and Google that stuff for us here, uh, you can share. Uh, any news on the ETH's ETF? There's, there's no news on that that I'm aware of. It's still sort of pressed for uh, May. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. David says, oh, this site in here. Coinbase lost a lawsuit in federal court this week. I'm not unhappy about that. I'm in part of a class action lawsuit against Coinbase. Um, you know, I do still use them, but uh, 2021, they locked out a lot of members. Couldn't get in. Couldn't get in as the markets were tanking for two months. Lost 25K. So um, I will point out that is still a risk of being an, on an exchange if you get locked out. And for any reason, or can't get in to sell your coins, they're not going to reimburse you. Um, but anyway, your point is that could point to ETH as a security. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I had proposed that, you know, um, uh, months ago and said, uh, you know, the problem is that now that ETH is no longer proof of work and they changed it to proof of stake, I got it backwards earlier. It's, it used to be proof of work and they changed it. Well, originally when Gensler said it's ETH and Bitcoin are not securities because it's proof of work. Well, now that they switched that, they could come back and say, hey, wait a minute, you guys, now it's a security. I don't know. Well, it's 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 like a soap opera. We'll have to see. But uh, it's... um. So you're saying it only has a 20% path of approval now. Well, that... Uh, that's would be interesting news. Why? When did this hit? Um, sorry guys, this must be European because they do the dates all funny. I'm like, is this from the future? Eleven November third, twenty twenty four. But no, that was from uh, March eleventh. So that was yesterday. I did not see that. So it says the SEC has alleged privileged information was shared by a former Coinbase manager. Um, has been ordered to pay 80, 817000 in dis disengorgement and a $1.6 million civil penalty. Uh, well, at least it wasn't, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, Bejalvi? Bellagi? Yeah, he rides with Bellagio in Vegas. That's how I remember. Remember, the, guy, the Coinbase CTO, Bellagi, made that million-dollar Bitcoin bet. I was wondering if he had inside information, but of course, he he lost the bet, but he still made money by the, the increase in Bitcoin and, and exposure, I think. Uh, let's just skim on this final. How are we doing on time? We're going a little long in time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Western District of Washington, a final judgment against Samir for engaging insider trading. Um, yeah, that's, that's, no, uh, that's not allowed. No good, you guys. Uh, you know who also got fired? Uh, from his company for similar things as uh, Tika Tawari and the, some of the other guys over at Palm Beach Letter and um, I believe it's Palm Beach Letter uh, were doing some of this, uh, recommending coins. Uh, Tika, yeah, Tika was, he was doing something peripherally, but I always wondered why he was making some of those coin picks that he did, because to be fair, they were terrible. Uh, I've tracked those for a while in 2021, and I, I I wondered, I wonder if he's getting compensated on the side for these, because um, uh, most all of them went down and to the right. Instead of, just for the record, Tika, we want to go up and to the right, up and to the right, not down and to the right. 
Uh, I have history with him and his former employees, so I took a little jab at him there. Yes, um, but um, anyway, a lot of our members were were have had <laughs> terrible results with those guys. Anyway, for the record, we have not confidentiality breached, insider details disclosed, um, sent allegations broad. So I think we kind of complete this or um, completed this. But where uh, is this the article where you saw a lesser chance of um, an ETF? I think that's something we may need to dig up later. And uh, yeah, David, exactly. So, um, yeah, Barry, that's that's the TLDR saying they failed to maintain their standards. Well, the bunch of those guys were getting paid on the side for recommending coins in the newsletter. Uh, big gun, big no, no. Yeah, we don't do that ever. So, um Anyway, uh, that's the news, you guys. Any other questions? Uh, I will continue to answer these as we go. I want to show you a couple things, though. On um, first of all, first of all, uh, the let me just I'm not supposed to show you all this stuff, but uh, the uh, we have some new indicators, and I don't know if I have that page open, so I'll have to uh, let's see if we can find this here. But bing, bada boom, that one, not 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 that one. Uh, what is this one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. And, uh, by the way, guys, I do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one work. And, uh, if you are interested in having me help build a dollar cost averaging worksheet for you to optimize the bull run, uh, you can learn more at moonstream.io slash coaching, or get in touch with us somehow on our website, a uh, very limited amount of time. So, uh, and I did pick up a new client over the weekend. So, and, and maybe one this week. So just, just for those of you who want a little bit of handholding, uh, we have a, interactive dollar cost averaging worksheet where build an optimal portfolio for what you have to invest with. Otherwise, you can find out more about what we do over at moonstream.io, including the crypto mastery indicators, which are the backbone of what we do here. And I'm going to show you how we use these here today and uh, actually give you a sneak peek at some of the new pro versions. If you like this training, if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, do like this content and hit subscribe so you get notified. We are putting out a lot more of uh, YouTube shorts and uh, clips of our paid classes, short clips, so you get some alpha there. If you want to be notified of those, make sure to hit that bell notification. And uh, to find out more about our Wednesday class, which is called M3 Crypto, it's like this, but we go into more detail. We look at total market cap, the DXY, we look at uh, coin picks, and I do make coin recommendations and a private signal group. Includes the indicators, just a little commercial here, guys. So this is our highest level active training class and I'm getting tremendous feedback, members area, and a bunch of other bonuses like uh, high probability candle patterns, the DCA investing worksheet I told you about, and high probability uh, patterns in the markets. And uh, uh, by the way, if you haven't realized, I actually do trade. And uh, every day, and I'm sitting here doing all this and hanging out with my boy Jay Powell there at the Bitcoin conference. So uh, you can read about that. You can find all access, access to all these at moonstream.io. So <clears throat> with that, um, let me uh, hop over to... These are just all of our services here, and um, you can learn more about that uh, here as well as get signed up for a free trader success checklist. By the way, we are going to show you this. If you don't have this, go to moonstream.io and you can download it there at the bottom. I think if you go to moonstream.io slash free checklist, that should give you access to this. And it's cool. It's interactive. You uh, will click off here if things are, so if there's price above the 21 and 50 day EMA, you click on that. It gives it a score of one out of 21. Is it above rising support trend line? Another check two out of 21. Is it breaking above resistance? So if you're getting above a three or four on the checklist, it's pretty good trade. Pretty good trade. And we also have our own custom indicators in here, which many of you have known to grown to know and love, like the ERI. We'll talk about this. This the ERI and the TSI are sort of my go-to entry signals. And if you have those two, generally that's enough to get in. And then we have something called the signal, the trend. And uh, we've got to uh, share with you today a couple of new ones. We've got a Bollinger Band indicator, which I love. And we have an order block detector, which is cool. And we have an ERI Pro, which shows, shows order money flow. So those are awesome. Let me uh, get to those. Uh, so first of all, though, let's look at the markets. So this I've had drawn for a while that I really thought, and we should have come down and had a dip. But as we already talked about, why didn't we? Because ETF. Uh, you know, so this, this whole scenario now is moot. Um, we did not get a dip. So what do we do now? 
this is a weekly time frame, and so uh, we may just be in for this, you guys. Uh, either scenario is on the table. Could this be an upthrust after distribution move in the Wyckoff patterns? But generally, that that I would say no, and I'll say I'll tell you why. If you're not familiar with Wyckoff patterns, uh, typically they have zones of accumulation, zones of distribution, and then there's an upthrust, which is sort of the parabolic move, puts in new high, comes down, and then the upthrust after distribution here is the fake out. And it would be highly unusual if this were a fake out. Uh, we would put in a new high that would retest and you'd see it pop up a little bit above it and then maybe it comes down. But uh, we just don't know, guys. Anything is possible here. So these are the two scenarios. I am going to I'm going to tell you that my um, to kind of do a quick read here. It's a little fuzzy uh, right now. I was saying initially we would get a pullback and then and then I felt strongly we'd push higher to 100K. And uh, it's it's a bit uncertain here. I'm just checking with my gut feeling. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have a psychic 900 number, but uh, my, my gut feeling has usually been pretty good. Even when I was saying we should get a pullback, I was feeling like, but I, I don't think we do. I think we power right on through it. So we want to be a little careful here. The good news is that we've held above the 70K level, the new high. So this should add, should flip as support. And then we push higher. I've shown you my targets here. And 100,000, I think we do see here by, by or before, certainly around the halving. And then we push on up to 155K. Look at that. I drew that, uh, move that up and it hits that 155K target, which I think is the cycle high for this year. Um, let's see, this one has a breakdown of securities criteria, same case. Uh, it was, uh, so I'll look at that at the end, Dave. If you guys want to stick around, I'll unpack the news on that um, for us. But thank you for sharing. And uh, yeah, so Perry also saying, <clears throat> pardon me, the, yeah, so Perry saying the, I taught you guys that the odd number of touches or breakout attempts, usually the breakthrough. And so you're saying this is the third one at Bitcoin high 70K. This is true. Yeah. So if we do not, if we do not hold here, then more than likely we have a fourth and then a fifth attempt. So, you know, that's the big question. What would cause this to fail here? But uh, I just, with I don't see a reason for ETF money to slow down. They're all trying to get ahead of each other. Strictly from a chart standpoint, I think this should come back to test the 21 and 50 week EMAs. So if it's going to be shallower here, I believe we'd see this if we started to see that and it would be short lived. So these are the two scenarios. And um, here's the thing, you guys, if you've been, if you got in down here at 16.5, when we were telling people to get back in this market, back in January, even December of 2021, uh, we launched our M3 active trader class. So I was saying, I think this is the bottom, you guys. And then in January, we were saying it's time to get in. We knew that because of our, our early reversal candle here, uh, those of you that have not seen our indicators yet, let me just unpack this a little bit. The ERI, do you see this on a monthly time frame? This green arrow right here, that's when we were highly confident it was time to get back in the market. Why? Because our early reversal indicator is only fired four times each time at a market cycle low. Can you see this? And the mechanics of that I can explain, but most of you have already heard this. And this was an accidental discovery. It's one of our best indicators, uh, and uh, if not the best, uh, for catching these swings. So all the way back here at the bark cycle bottom 2012, here again in 2015, here again in 2019. And then so when it triggered here with a bullish engulfing candle back in January of 23, I was like, it's time to get in. And so point is, if you had and have been with us that long, I would be taking some profits here. And not all, but if you could, if you sold 20 or 25%, that would be prudent to buy any pullback. If you haven't been, and if you've been one of those people waiting for the dip that didn't come, which was most of us, you know, I knew when we were watching this 33 level, 33,000 level like a hawk, and I knew once we broke that, it was off to the races. So, um, that has uh, that that's those prices aren't coming back. So the question is, if you're if you've just getting in late, 
you know, if you did get around 44,000, still taking some profit, good idea, maybe move it into some altcoins. But if you're just still on the sidelines and not sure if you should get in at all, I would start getting in this market because even if it pulls back, you are hold some powder dry to dollar cost average because this thing certainly, I believe, is going much higher and uh, and that's uh, that's going to happen sooner than later. Perry says, maybe Bitcoin keeps going up now until the 21 and 50 EMAs are also above 70k i don't know i've never i don't really correlate the emas being above a certain price um let me know why you're suggesting that uh let's see uh but david said yeah so we yeah exactly we know that um closed above yesterday retesting as support both on a weekly basis also i like to see a weekly close above the old high so that gives me confidence you know if it does pull back on a weekly basis to retest 68k still good i mean we could always we might see change take that off uh we could see this kind of a pattern so uh, we have to be open to anything here you guys if you go all in don't panic sell i wouldn't set stop losses too tightly uh, one of our coaching clients um we we're chatting last night was stopped out on bitcoins on this uh kind of whipsaw <clears throat> yesterday because it had a, like an it was a ten thousand dollar a high low and so he had his stop loss right in here he had stopped out and then it went higher so on this you know you want to be generous with your stop losses i would have them below the 21 day ema and you can see also with our our order block detector that there's a lot of buy pressure in here okay so having your stop loss kind of in that zone i would have had it around sixty one thousand. Uh, below the 21 EMA and um, maybe even 60K, kind of a wider stop because you are going to see more volatility. Uh, and in reality now, though, this this line of support, where did this go? The old high, I would have had my stop right below the 65, right below 65K. I think that would have been good to maybe part, maybe half of it below there and the other half in this buy region because if it blows down there, then there's a, a C a sh a change coming. Okay, Um Let's see. Okay, so I had a feeling one of you was going to ask about that, uh, the 5.3 calculation. Um, tell me this. There's only one guy talking about it, as far as I know, and I know who that is. Is there other, other, other people talking about it? I did that same study. I recreated it. And if you want to look at it here, I'll see if I can find it. But in the end, I don't think it pay, plays out. I don't think it does. And on um, so because why? Because ETF, ETF money, billions of dollars are coming in and they don't care about um, this, uh, this chart, this calculation. And if you're not familiar with it, you can Google it. I'm not going to go into it now. Uh, and I did save it here somewhere, but now I can't find it. And maybe it's 80K. Uh, all right. I'm not finding it, you guys. So. I'll just skim through this, but while it was interesting on the math, it, you also had to really be very careful with where you moved it because uh, it could skew. It's it would skew fairly widely uh, with <clears throat> moving. You know, it's really hard to get those price points exactly. And is it log chart? Is it regular? There's a lot of variables there. It's kind of one of those things that may have been configured uh maybe I, I even used it find me a number that forecasts and predicted every of the last uh, peaks and so forth so uh, i can't find it you guys and i'm not going to dig too far if i could find it later i know i saved it somewhere but um as you can see i've got a bazillion saved charts and i don't remember what it's called more importantly i want to get to our new indicators because you guys need to see these and um if you're new to the crypto mastery by the way <clears throat> Uh, these indicators have been our our uh, guiding light, really, for all of these major moves. Uh, there's a lot going on here on this chart, so I'll just get rid of this. So taking away all of those things and looking at our indicators here, again, you can find out more at cryptomastery.org and um, and show you these. We have an average true range, which is great for when things change direction. If you're long, this is where you would sell or go short. If you're short, you should go cover on the entry level. Uh, these are the early reversal indicator I told you about, these arrows. There's a lot of math behind these. They're not just some silly arrows on the charts. And when they align with this trend strength indicator below it, this is like 90%, 95%, these two things at major directional changes. I love it on the weekly. I love it on the monthly. I love it on the daily and even the shorter timeframes. 
Uh, this TSI, by the way, great for day trading. If anyone's day trading out there, I was uh, hitting some great shorts on the last market just on a one minute TSI. But that's not what we're going to talk about here today. Uh, again, you can find out more, though, at CryptoMastery.org. And this chart here, we can see that, uh, for example, if we go to a weekly and I turn on the ERI, I just let me just point out the, the high of the market was November of 21, you know, back in here. Saw a bearish engulfing candle and another one here, but people were still in disbelief. They didn't realize this that was it. Well, we had a secret weapon. Look at this. These red arrows. And the confirmation is on the TSI when it goes below 80. Okay, so this red arrow called the top of the market to the week. We also called it to the day. It was uh, it was on there as well. I need to go back way, way back. But you can see that on the daily also. So when they are in confluence, daily, weekly, we were like, hey, I think this is the top. I, I had some other things I was watching, but this for sure is going to be the, one of the main things I'm watching on this next market cycle. If we get a weekly red candle on that, um, I would be selling and not waiting around. <clears throat> and, uh, and and that's there's the reason the, to understand what these are. It's kind of like following the footsteps of elephants. It has to do with velocity. The actual indicator I've just opened up here for those of you that are dubious about the little red arrow and green arrow, uh, we noticed patterns here that when things happened in a three time period, let's say a three day time period, three week time period, uh, it had high correlation to continue. And also uh, that um, we had laid in a Keltner band and some other quant stuff. So uh, there's a look behind the curtain version called the ERI oscillator, uh, but we just usually leave the arrows on. So uh, we also call the bottom down here in July of 2021. Again, the arrow and then the confirmation with this TSI, that's when these confirm. And going back, uh, let's see, I'll just going back over to our trade success checklist, this is how you use it. So if you are in a trade and you're not sure if you should take the trade or not, uh, by the way, you can download this for free at uh, moonstream.io slash free checklist. And if that doesn't work, just go to our website. It's down here at the bottom, the Trader Success Checklist at moonstream.io. And basically, you start checking these off. And when you get a, a success score of over four, even two or three, it's worth taking that trade. And what's cool also is if you see some bearish signals, you can click on those and it's going to lower the trade success uh, score. And so, or you can do it on uh, bearish trades as well. Um, I want to tell you about the radar. I want to I want to go through some of the indicators really else, uh, really quick. Anyway, um, and um, so let's do that. Basically, if you start seeing these four things, the ERI, remember that arrow? We have the TSI going green above 20, super bullish. And then the signal line. The signal line is a different indicator entirely. And it's different quant uh, calculations. So the point is when these start to converge, it's increased confidence and increased probability the trade will work out in your favor. So we have the signal line going from red to green also. So now we've got three of these. We call them the four kings, our ERI, TSI signal. And the final one is the, the bell in the trend indicator, because this, again, is based on some different oscillators. Uh, the trend indicator kind of signals a longer follow through. So the key says, hey, there might be a trend change. The red line here means there's no trend. The green says there may be a trend change. Pay attention. The bell is the buy signal. And then it goes through a series of seven numbers. The bag of money is when you would take profits. Uh, the little green dollar, you could take some profits. And then you wait for a new key and bell to confirm the trend. Here, key, bell, boom, shot up. So we had two cycles of bell to money, bell to money. So um, hopefully you guys are seeing that. <clears throat> the um, th this, was, this has been our staple for a long time. We did add a multi time frame radar, by the way, which is also useful for timing these things. If it's all red, stay out. If it's all green, more confirmation to get in. If it's mixed, you can get in just based on these four. Okay. Now, this per version here is the ERI Pro, you guys. It's got a money flow. These are order blocks where big buy blocks were coming in. Also, really powerful. And, uh, and so, and for telling, for making, seeing that move go higher. So we have a number of different things at our disposal. The other one is that ATR, that average true range. And by the way, you can get all these really good deal at um, cryptomastery.org. 
Um, and Myrene, could you check that link for me again? I had fixed it the other day and it seems to have reverted uh, the, the buy link. <clears throat> so, and, uh, and also, could you send me the, um, okay, yeah, she sent me the link for the pro indicators as well, which I'm going to show you. Uh, it's not, listen, it's, I'm not, not here to sell you things you don't need, you guys. You don't have to get rid of, uh, you don't have to get rid of your other RSIs and everything. I'm just telling you, those are not as good as what we have. And if you're trading against me and that's, and I'm using my indicators, I'm going to be, I'm going to win. Uh, these are better than the RSI and MACDs, partially because that's what everyone else is using. Do you want to use what everyone's using or do you want to have an edge? Um, so let me come back to this. Uh, you can read more about <clears throat> these crypto mastery basic indicators <clears throat> here, but uh, okay, it does work. So uh, you can get a month free uh, for 497. You get a month free and then it's 497 every six months. Uh, or if you want to go monthly, you can go monthly at cryptomastery.org. Um, guys, I've been trading 25 years. I won't use anything else. Um, the newer indicators, one of them was an accident, that uh, ERI, but the combination of that with the TSI and the signal and the trend indicator, and now with the, even the pro indicators, you don't need the pro indicators if you're new to this, but uh, many of you are here are in our M3 Active Trader program and are using the indicators. And if you are, just put in the chat if, how, if you love them, uh, how much they've helped you. <clears throat> and so... With that, let me just dive back into this. And the ATR, the dynamic average true range, is great because here in this case, going all the way back here to November 21, when we had the bearish ERI and we went down, then it flipped exit. So it confirmed the trend has changed. So right in here, we would have had a huge confidence this market's going down. Similarly, <clears throat> similarly in, in January of 2023, when we had that bullish ERI signal on the monthly, right around that same time, what did we have? We had the average true range flip to entry mode. So, you know, hedge fund managers are really risk managers. And so what we're doing here is de-risking the trades. So had you been with us and watching that, you would have been in these markets last January. And then we flipped and we had a big buy block on the ERI Pro, another big buy block right here. That These are invisible things you're not going to see otherwise. You might be like, I don't know, is it going to reject at the 50-day EMA? Is it coming down? I mean, let's be honest. If you're looking at this chart right here, do you, do you have any confidence it's going to break above the 50-week EMA? Be honest. You don't know. Often it rejects here. But what did we have? We turn on our secret... Uh, uh, you know, ERI Pro, we had a huge buy block here. And then we had get bounced off the 21, another huge buy block. And then the 21 week got above the 50 week, right? So here, bullish, bullish, ATR still green, another ERI bullish, bullish all the way up. We should have been in this trade and stayed all the way in up to the top. Uh, so we'll be watching these on a daily basis, a weekly basis. If you don't have these, you're at a disadvantage. So going into this bull run, and I'm, I'm going to say right now, it's now is the time. If you've been waiting this whole time, get in the market. Don't go all in, but I'd be 50 to 70%, maybe 75% invested, maybe 80 and hold a little bit back if we get any pullback, but we may, we may not. But you need to have these indicators as your secret weapons in this market. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at, uh, there's something else in here. There's also a volatility index, which is on a shorter time frame. Actually, I don't have that chart open. That's for more of your swing traders, day traders. Uh, you can read about it on the website. I want to switch gears though, and I want to open a new chart and show you the new pro indicators because uh, we got a little bit of time here left. And these are super exciting. So because we've been putting these together for quite some time, and where is that chart though? I should have saved Pro. Pro, there it is. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're not using the layouts, you should be using layouts. That way, you can save them, you can put them away, you can come back. And uh, and I'll share another good tool with you in a moment if you'd like to hear it uh, for how you can save all of your layouts and your tabs and everything. But anyway, let's look at uh, Fetch Coin here for a minute and look at some of these other indicators and I'll turn some of them off. One of them is called the rocket, which is one of our favorites and they call it rocket on the launch pad. So let me turn some of these on and off here so you can see these. And uh, we've got some new ones actually. Joe is Joe's our programming partner. 
and uh, just came out with some other cool ones. So basically the Trend Pro is like the former Trend, which was down below the screen. The difference with the Trend Pro is you have this, these order blocks, like I said, and uh, then the, the signals you can put right on the charts, right? And then the vertical green line, I want to make sure you understand how this works. It just makes it easier to spot. Rather than searching down here for the bell, here the bell is on the chart and you get a vertical green line telling you this is a buy signal. Okay, so bells are for buys. And invariably, they all worked. That one went up, this one went up, took some profits. This bell went up here to there, and this bell actually is going down a little bit, but uh, it's not over. It's not over yet. Uh, what I would also be looking at though is the TSI Pro. The TSI down here, we have the big chevron here signaling that this is heading lower and there's another nuance here we won't get into too much training but when this breaks below 80 it confirms the sell signal and if it breaks above 20 it confirms the buy signal that is just increases the probabilities it goes to the other side and again we like to look at these in confluence because over here we had the eri see this little green arrow I'll just move it up a bit because it was such a good run. ERI, and then we confirmed it when the TSI went above 20 right down here. And then we had the buy signal with the trend indicator. So all these happened in a short period of time to confirm that trade. And then also some good old-fashioned TA, the 21-day EMA broke above the 50-day EMA, and then it was off to the races. Do you see how valuable these can be for you? Uh, in the chat, by the way, there's two links. There's the link for the basic indicators, cryptomastery.org. For the Pro Pack, we have a special right now where you can get those for a lifetime, lifetime for $14.97. And um, that's right here, or you can pay for the year for $4.97. They work very well in conjunction with the original indicators. Uh, and um, But if you were to choose one of them, I would go with the Pro Pack because it has the ERI Pro, it has the TSI Pro, it has the Trend Pro, and it doesn't have the Signal Pro yet because we haven't created it. But a little bird told me we might be including the Signal Pro in the uh, for everyone who bought the this, this Pro version. So, you know, it's just a little bit better version, and um, you can get it all for a pretty good deal, actually. You get the Pro version for $4.97 for a year for limited time, you know, but fourteen ninety seven for lifetime, guys. Just go to crypto master. Sorry, go to moonstream.io slash mastery pro. Look, I get it. You might be using other things you like, and you might believe in them. I guarantee you, and I will guarantee it. Try ours. If they're not better than what you're using, we'll buy them back for you. Okay. If you don't make more money with our indicators, let me know. Um, and and you know, look, you might be using the cipher thing, which is really confusing and makes my eyes hurt. Maybe you like that. Uh, I used to try to use it and I used to use both of these together though. But in the end, I just found I didn't need the cipher thing. And um, uh, I do better with these. You know, you can overanalyze things to death. Uh, so point is you can use these in conjunction with other indicators. All right, so, and you can check in the chat. Indicators make it so much easier, Susie says. Uh, David says the indicators work on everything and the checklist is based off the indicators, right? So if you're new, brand new even, you can use the trade success checklist here to optimize your trading. And, uh, you know, and that's what a lot of people are doing. They sort of, I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing. So um, they use the trade success checklist above and that's how they win uh, using our indicators. Okay, cool. What else do we want to look at, you guys? We talked about so that. Um, I... Well, hold on, hold on. Let me, um, I forgot to show you the other pro indicators. Now I'm a bit lost because I'm all over the place. Uh, here, here, there, fetch coin. This is it. Sorry, here it is. So what do we have? That's the, I haven't shown you the Bollinger Bands indicator yet. Look at this, you guys. I'm going to turn off. Now you can toggle these on and off. You can set alerts on them also. So that's one of the benefits here. If you want to set an alert on one of these things you can do for a new order block, right? So we've got two things. Order blocks, these dark green ones, this is where play, people have placed their orders to buy. So there's heavy buy pressure down here. The lighter green is where there was a lot of buying, right? There was a lot of buying pressure. So these together is, is better. Uh, I'll turn that off now as part of the ERI and uh, let's see. So I want to get to 
to show you the Bollinger Bands, which is there, and the Trend Pro, and then the Rocket. Guys, got to tell you about the Rocket. Let me get to that. Uh, it, for, let me do first the Bollinger Bands, and uh, we'll turn off this um, TSI Pro down at the bottom so you guys can see it, okay? And so what is this? You guys have all know about Bollinger Bands. I, for those of you who have been with this for a while, you know that I use a modified Bollinger Band because the standard Bollinger Bands just don't work when it comes to crypto. And essentially, we change the standard deviation a bit. But uh, in the new Bollinger Band indicator, the upper Bollinger Band is red, which is risky. As my good friend Steve Nissen taught me, when price goes at or above the upper Bollinger Band, and he learned it from John Bollinger, so um, kind of have the insight on this. <laughs> the uh, When it goes above the upper Bollinger, usually it will revert at least to the mean, but often to the lower Bollinger Band. That's a very good nuance. So we've colored the upper Bollinger Band red because above there, it's risky. It should revert and go down. And similarly, the lower Bollinger Band is green. If it gets below there, it should go up or revert to the mean. Now, we've also color-coded this kind of like on the trend indicator, but for, for the Bollingers, it's if it gets above the upper Bollinger Band, it's going to give a red signal. And sure enough, you can see every time it did, got red here, went sideways. Sometimes it just pauses and continues higher. Uh, but it, oftentimes it'll go up and then it'll pull back down. You get a pullback. So the upper Bollinger Band is my profit-taking signal, one of my favorite profit-taking signals. And so this is why people are loving this new Bollinger Band. Uh, and so you see how it rides this modified Bollinger Band all the way up, sideways, sideways, all the way up, sideways, sideways, just touches it here and barely goes above it here. So we didn't get uh, the red signal and it just kind of pulled back and pulled, sold off. We can look at another chart. What do you guys want to look at? Maybe Phantom Coin. Yeah, so here's a good example. Broke above the upper Bollinger, came back down in, refreshed and pumped higher. So if you're in this trade, you could take partial profits and then buy it back lower and then ride it higher, buy it back lower, you know? So very cool signal. I love that um, that we have that now. And uh, we can go through all of these, but uh, market's selling off. Wow, what happened, you guys? Markets were doing great there. Now we're selling off a bit. Um, hmm. Well, after all that talk of the weekly, though, and if it's a fake out, just in the last few minutes, this is happening, you guys. Is there any news? Uh, well, this may let okay. So, so as long as we hold the old high, you know, a pullback here would be welcome. It just, uh, we don't want, we want to make sure it's not a big one at this point. We, we need to make sure we hold the old high. Because otherwise, it's a triple top, and that won't be good. Let's see the news. Uh, let's see. Craig Wright committed perjury. <laughs> Great. Well, he's not Satoshi. Jeez, who knew? Ethereum ETF approval odds. That's probably part of it, right? Um, okay. So, sheep whales, nobody cares. Samson Mao, bullish price prediction. You know, um, here here's what we want to unpack here. Uh, let's see, patient. Uh, it's probably, probably, uh, you know, well, yeah. J Jamie Diamond defends the right. Uh, John defends the right to buy Bitcoin, although he never will. Sure, JP Morgan's buying it. But anyway, so basically, uh, this uh, this news might be spooking the market. What I will say is, at these inflection points in these markets, at these inflection points, uh, typically they kind of hover around here until there's any kind of news that's bad for them to drop it down. And so finally, it seems we are seeing some profit takers, uh, profit taking, uh, and then on this this sort of pseudo news, right uh, at this old high. So you know, look, I would welcome a pullback down to around. 65k so that way if you are in the trade and you went into bitcoin and everything and you want to go buy in a pullback you know 65k is the most likely level to hold and you see a lot of buy pressure down below 60k so these are some more areas to dca into the market and uh and that would be um that would be a good way to play this okay so this news will be digested and absorbed pretty quickly i do want to want just skim over that though uh the etf odds plummet who is this from We've got, uh, according to data provided from 
Never heard of them. Odds of SEC. A lot of these things are sort of trying to make a name for themselves. So I would take a grain, a grain of salt with who the journalist is and if they're trying to sensationalize a story. But um, let's see. He, the odds of approving spot traded ETF on ETH dropped to 24%. Based on what? So... Uh, okay, based uh, follows analysts agency's recent delay in decision regarding ETH at ETF promotions, BlackRock, Fidelity, blah, blah, blah. blah. Postponed May 23rd. We'll see. Maybe it gets kicked down the can. The can gets kicked down the road a bit, you guys. Certainly possible. Uh, I'm not going to talk about SHIB um, or um, so bullish prediction. Well, this guy has the same price prediction that uh, I have, I think. Uh, isn't he also calling for 150K? Uh, so soon, hold tight. I thought that was in the summary. So I don't know. I'll send you for previous surpass a million. It's not in the article, but I thought it was in the uh, summary here. Uh, but it, it doesn't really say, okay, I'm mixing him up with somebody else. All right, you guys. Well, I think that's about all we really need to unpack. Watch for pullback for as a buying opportunity, you know, in ETH, ETF, if anything, if anything, money should flow back into Bitcoin because the trade, once the the Bitcoin ETFs came out, the trade, uh, you know, the trade became get in front of the ETH ETF. If that's less likely, you know, the money that came out of the Bitcoin ETFs in the IBIT may come back in, right? So let's take a look at the IBIT here. Also, our indicators work very well on this. Uh, big, ugly red candle on the IBIT here today suddenly. So um, didn't see that coming. Uh, but uh, what actually we kind of did overbought here, we see our TSI coming down lower and it's not as bearish as our, our ERI didn't fire because it didn't hit the high enough level for the drop. I see this as a short term drop. I wouldn't get too worried about it. And, um, you know, if we come down on the IBIT to the 21 EMA down in here, being, you know, we're certainly watching for these buy blocks on these uh, ERI pro a uh, great way to uh, catch the uh, what the uh, whale, the big whale of the ETF market is doing. We can talk about the halving a bit. We'll talk more about that in tomorrow's M3 class. Basically, just left translated cycle. You can see price inching higher well ahead of the halving. You know, normally this parabola would be more like over here and the prices would go up after the halving in April, May. And so I, but I think it's more left translated, left skewed. So we're seeing that. We're seeing that price push up the parabola like this. This is just a screenshot. This isn't an actual, that's my uh, my best guess. Uh, DGEN leverage the dip. That's right, David. I mean, you know, hey, uh, if you want to go all in and uh, kind of get some leverage behind this on a dip, be careful. I'm not saying do that unless you know what you're doing. But um, these AI market makers really good at liquidating you guys on the uh, trading with margin. Hey, there's an A book and a B book, you guys. Can they move the price? Sure, they can. Sure, they can. They'll keep a big buy order on the B book till they're ready to fill it after they drop prices down. So anyway, um, let's take a look at this real quick on the uh, weekly, which we had been watching, or the monthly rather. Um, the other thing too is the RSI is a bit frothy. It's not quite up to this area. Uh, the RSI monthly did get down to these lower regions and bounce off of them as we expected. RSI still heading higher on the um, monthly. So that's still bullish. It's just the weekly is kind of in a range. This 88 range has been trouble before. So a little different story on the uh, weekly RSI here. So, you know, uh, pull back. Look, it's all it's pointed toward pullback. We should have one. And maybe everyone is just FOMOing in right now. And they're, you know, now the market's ready to have one. But look at the stochastics RSI and the weekly also pegging the highs. Uh, you know, we pushed up here. Um, back in November, this, this it could stay up here a little longer, but we've got to have some refresh in here at some point. Uh, so to but money flow continuing to go higher, rejected here a little bit. This is a bit delayed, hard to use it as a leading indicator. And of course, the uh, the MACD is uh, kind of flying up, but we want to be careful. We want to be mindful of this. Uh, the um, you know, the uh, MACD at the end of 2021 was my signal that it was time to get out. I don't use MACD that often, but uh, back in 2021, when these two crossed and it was almost up here, it was all it was way up in this region. Uh, and then it crossed. That was clear signal to get out. That was January of 2022 when I was pounding the table to get out. 
And we also saw the same thing back here when it finally crossed in June of 18, but really it started heading down much earlier after the peak, as we know, and after that big run up in, in end of 2017. Okay, guys, lots to cover. How do we do on time? Just at 90 minutes. Excellent. Good timing. Uh, so once again, if you'd like to, if you like more of this, by the way, and we go deeper, I give coin picks. If you'd like to join us for our M3 Active Trader class tomorrow, you can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. It includes those base indicators, includes all these bonuses and trainings, and you get a cool hat, although we're out of hats right now. Uh, except for our inner circle, we're getting more created. But um, this is my highest level active trading training, daily access to me. And I'm very, uh, very busy and active responding in the M3 Active Trader chat. So you can see this here where we are just in here. It's like, it's like Discord, but better. You don't have like a bazillion useless comments. We keep it focused on trading, trade opportunities. Here's some uh, buy alerts for I put out on, say, Sui and... Uh, and another one, so um, and charts. So I'm in here every day updating. If you like what we did today, you can have daily access to me. You can message questions. And of course, the Wednesday class is excellent tomorrow where we dive a little deeper. You can go to moonstream.io slash M3. It's $300 a month, but it includes the indicators. It's worth every penny. You can save a little bit if you want to go buy the annual. Uh, if you don't want the indicators, you can do that also. Uh, most people, I don't think we sold a single one without the indicators because people know that's where the magic happens. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks. I want to wish you a good week and um, trade safe. You know, this pullback here. We do have some more economic news this week, I believe. And so we'll be watching that. And um, yeah, Bitcoin down 2,500 now. So seeing quite a drop uh, based on really based on the L let's do this, you guys, before we sign off. <clears throat> I can, you know, the the Bollinger Bands probably were signaling at least down in here, but the uh, trend channel, which is what I like to put on these, it's one of the new things that we, you know, one of the simple things that you could have done all the way along. Trend channels typically contain price action very well, and uh, catching a new trend channel is a great way to uh, profit from these markets. But, uh, you know, this uh, is not letting me grab it for some reason. Come on, get on the right tool here, guys. Trading view, a little glitchy lately. But, uh, you know, this it's in the upper range of its trend channel. A pullback here would be warranted. It's very high above its 21-day EMA. So, like I said, like a pullback here into the 60,000 range. Uh, if that's going to freak you out, maybe take some profits off the table. But uh, that's kind of what I think we're looking at. Maybe it comes down into this range. Uh, hard to say with the CTF money, you guys. So... Uh, we'll be watching for that. A lot of buy pressure below here. So, you know, worst case scenario down in the 60,000s and get a nice bounce. That would be nice. Get a bit of a drop here. Refresh, like jumping off the house into the trampoline so you can bounce higher. 20% pullback would be a good thing from the high. And so, you know, don't be worried. I have a chart in here somewhere. It shows all these pullbacks over the, uh, the years. Just pull that up for those of you that are worried about... Um, What's going on? Sorry, you guys got a bazillion charts on. I think it's this one. Yeah. Um, hang on. I'm going to turn off some of the other noise. Okay. So basically, this shows the pullbacks over time. Uh, we saw 37% earlier this year. We saw 22% here. And 20%, I was, we've got a 20% back in here. I was expecting a little deeper one, but that was, this one was a 20%er. So we've had a recent one as recently as January. So another 20% pullback wouldn't be a bad thing, you guys. All right. So Perry says, thought money would flow out of the Bitcoin into the alts. Not necessarily. When Bitcoin goes down, the alts generally go down as well. So we'll see what happens. Uh, David said, um, uh, Perry, I don't do individual coin picks in this class. Those are uh, those are in the Wednesday class. Uh, the For the M3 Active Trader, quite quite a good portfolio going. Uh, this this class is designed for predominantly training for the crypto mastery indicators. So we start with news, keep it fresh, go through news charts and how to use the uh, indicators that we just talked about. Again, the links are in there. If you want to get the uh, pro indicators, that's uh, the first link where it's moonstream.io slash mastery pro or the regular ones. Just go to cryptomastery.org. 
But the better deal right now is that lifetime on the Crypto Mastery Pro Pack. And, uh, and by the way, with the markets down, I wouldn't really be given a coin pick anyway. Uh, it's red across the board. Um, I Actually, I know what you mean, Perry. We were, sometimes we'll pull up the hot movers. Uh, injunctive, actually. Well, there you go. I mean, I look for weakness when the markets are, I look for strength when the markets are weak. With injunctive breaking out here, this looks like uh, price discovery continuation. I would want to see the close above here because as we know, markets can sell off. And then if, you know, I would wait for the close. If it holds above 47.5 and 48, uh, I would I would say Injunctive is a good one to watch. And some of our Crypto Mastery lists that we've watched in the past. Yeah, Injunctive is on there. Near is up a little bit. It's a bit frothy though. Here's where that Bollinger Band comes in handy because uh, that's overbought. However, all green on the radar. That looks pretty good. Just uh, it get when it gets this far above the twenty one day EMA, it always kind of pulls back down, uh, in, invariably, it's eventually. So, but sea of red on all these altcoins, and you know, although Avax, I did just buy some Avax. Avax looks good here. Uh, you know, again, I would want to see it hold above that line. Let's take a look at our indicators. The eight, the ATR has gone back to entry, so that's bullish. The uh, ERI Pro. Got a nice little arrow here and a nice buy block. So uh, Avalanche looking good. We're getting a new signal line. So we had ERI, TSI went green back in here. So that was a better trade, but still continuing, continu continuing having a continuation pattern rather. And then um, what's also setting up is on the trend indicator, we're getting a key uh, and a bell. So if we get a bell tomorrow, that's further uh, indication that AVAX should go. I do like AVAX here as a possible buy. Uh, anything, everything else is red, you guys. So my top pick, if you're looking for one, would be ABAX here. Where could it go? Do we have any sell order pressure? Let's go in and see what the uh, L block, the M3 order block detector tells us. This has room to run, you guys. Look at that. There's no sell order pressure on ABAX, at least on KuCoin. I would check different exchanges. Uh, it's going to be different on different exchanges. So if we go over to uh, Coinbase, uh, pretty similar, but good looking chart. I mean, look at that. I, I like this chart a lot, to be honest. And, um, you know, that may or may not be a pick for uh, some of our other services. Look at that uh, gorgeous chart. Beautiful. What do you guys think? You like this? What do you like about it? I'm going to take a screenshot. But no, AVAX looks great here. And, you know, our radar is mostly green. We've got the uh, ERI back here, TSI, and the signal. And then we're getting about to get a bell. We have an order block in there. And um, yeah, that's about as good as it gets, you guys. The only thing that would negate this trade would be is if sold off below this call it $49 level, end of the day certainly could. Um, I did forget to show you guys the rocket here. So I wanna show you the rocket, which is part of the new ERI or the new uh, Crypto Mastery Pro indicators. And this is one I've been, I created or sort of saw the pattern for years and eventually we created it into a an indicator. Now it looks a little different, you guys. It's just this little rocket. I, I wanna have Joe reprogram that like it used to be with the green background. And uh, so let me just put the old version on. Uh, it's called Rocket on the Launchpad. And um, you can see that uh, it's a great indicator because look at this right in here. The rocket fired, shot up into the air like a good rocket should, came back down to the earth, did other things, did other things, had another rocket here, shot up. When they shoot off the launch pad, the rocket is basically this candle. Think of it as a bottle rocket or the old school Rockets you might shoot off of a uh, launch pad when you're in the Boy Scouts or Cub, Cub Scouts. Either way, bottle rocket. This is the fuel, the rocket fuel. The fuse down below, it has to sit reasonably on a support area. You know, we could also draw it like this because it's a little bit off from the EMA. I can give you the right tool. I want to create the launch pad so it's clear, right? So it's sitting on the launch pad. You light the fuse, it shoots up into the air. It's such a high probability signal that it's also on our trade success checklist. So if you have this, you can go over into this trade success checklist, scroll down and see where the rocket is. The rocket is one of our favorite indicators. It's explained uh, right in here. Where is it explained? Uh, it's right here. The rocket at support, rocket on the launch pad is a green candle with a real body resting at support. 
right here with a price wick below at or near the top. It ends, closes at or near the top of the day. So it's sitting on a launch pad. You light the fuse. It shoots up in the sky. The more rocket fuel, the better, the higher it goes. And that launch pad can be a 21-day, a 50-day EMA, or a trend line. Um, but point is, is that it holds there, it opens there, and closes near the top of the day, even though it dips down below a little bit. So that's that rocket on the launch pad. If we see those, we can check that off as another reason to buy that trade. Guys, if you get an 8 out of 21 trading score, take that trade. Anything over 4 or 5, you're going to win with that trade. So hopefully that helps. All right, everybody. Uh, just more comments. Uh, questions you guys have, does your checklist work for stocks? Yes, it does, Greg, thanks for asking. These indicators work for stocks. They work for all the markets. So if you wanna throw out a stock, I'll uh, pull up some of the ones in our Inner Circle Retire Rich program here, and I'll just go down to the bottom where we're watching a couple of stocks. Let's look at MicroStrategy or Coinbase. So uh, we've got to Coinbase, had a bit of a run here. We saw buy blocks there. It pushed right up into the sell order blocks right there. Okay, um, we've got... Turn on some more of these, uh, the Radar, Bollinger Band. Uh, I've, I don't have all the signals on this. So the ERI chart. Yeah, so look at this. And then we'll look at MicroStrategy. But uh, right in here, excellent buy signal on Coinbase. The ERI, the early reversal indicator, fired right there. Green arrow, it confirmed by the TSI going from red to green above 20. So that alone often is enough for me to take that trade. But we also had the signal line going green down in here. And I don't even see the trend indicator on here. So let's go ahead and add that. And it's gonna be an invite only. We we turn these on, by the way, when you sign up for these, uh, we will then, um, we just ask you to fill out a form with your trading view ID, and then we turn them on for you. And if you stop subscribing, we, we unfortunately turn them off for you. But back here to this trade though, watch this. I'm going to turn off the radar so it's not confusing. This green arrow, this confirmation, this went green. And then a little bit later, before it really started to run, again, this is Coinbase, we had the bell right as the 21-day EMA crossed the 50-day. So that, I love these signals right in here. And uh, that was the day before, but right in there when the 21 bounces off the 50, you know, we call that the ice. So think if you're going out on the ice, the frozen lake, do you want to be out on thin ice or thick ice? Uh, the green is the thick ice. That's the 50-day EMA. The orange is kind of the thin ice. See, up here, it tried to hold above, but it fell through the, the weak ice, the thin ice. And then it tried to get back above it, and it was drowning and drowned. And it came back, even got below the thick ice. It was drowning, tried to get up above, but finally it broke up above the thin ice and the thick ice when they're together. Think of it that way. If you had thick ice with more ice on top of it, you have more stability to stand on. So that's... Uh, that's a great analogy to follow. And essentially what happened is we had a bell right here on that date. And that was an excellent buy signal because this thing just took off and it went through several buy, buy signals, cycles rather. Got a uh, bell here and another bell here. So um, that is, uh, so again, that's Coinbase. It works excellent for stocks. Uh, you can use it on futures, anything in TradingView. We, you can use these indicators on so on uh, MicroStrategy, look at this beautiful trade. Had the early reversal indicator right here on the dip. Had a buy block signaling. We had the TSI confirm in there. Had the signal, had the bell. That's a beautiful uh, setup there. That's what we call our four kings. ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And that's a high, very high probability trade. Okay. And uh, we also have the order block detector right in there. So that's this is why these signals can and will give you an edge. So go over to cryptomastery.org and get a hold of these. $4.97 for six months, you get a free month. Or you can get the pro indicators, which I highly recommend, for $1,500 for a lifetime. Uh, that's a limited time. We're not doing that for very long. Uh, that's uh, kind of for the help the programmer out. Show him that, um, show him some love, but then it'll go back to uh, six month and annually and those prices will go a little higher. It's kind of a new uh, Indicator Pro release special. Okay, guys, uh, let's see. Those links are in the chat. We've got some chat here. Um, DGen by the dip. Covered that, covered that. Extreme Greed is at 81. Yeah, it was up around 90, but 81 is still extra frothy, you guys. So we want to be kind of careful here on the uh, Fear and Greed Index when we get up into... 
extra frothy zone. Extreme greed is not what we want to see because that means typically we're going to go lower. Okay. We had gone as high as 80. It's a little bit frothy there, you guys, but it was 90 last week. And sure enough, we're pulling back in a bit. Where do we want? We kind of want to see it around 71, right? 71, that's still greedy enough. If you're 80, you're getting in extreme, extreme greed, probably over leveraging, and the system needs to flush out some leverage. We could probably pull up the liquidations map. We'll do that tomorrow in the M3 class because uh, I, I imagine that there was an excessive amount of leverage, degen leverage, as you guys are saying, uh, in this system. So they're pulling it down. They're going to liquidate all the uh, longs there. Uh, I will do one. Uh, uh, Greg says, any opinion on Litecoin? Litecoin was up like 20% yesterday, wasn't it? That's uh, that's a uh, great one to keep an eye on. I, I like Litecoin. It just kind of was, uh, was languishing for so long. Let's see. Where do we want to find... Litecoin, I'll just pull it in here. But uh, AVAX, Near, and INJ all looking good here today. Probably some DGEN ones. Sometimes we'll look at the big movers on, but I'm not going to pull that up today. I don't have time. Uh, and what are we looking for? Sorry, it's been a long day already. LTC, Litecoin. Uh, so we'll see what's going on with that. Yeah, pumped. I, I think this pullback is expected on the indicators. We have a bell, you guys. So uh, this pullback is just some profit taking. I think Litecoin's setting up pretty well, except... Except the only thing I don't like about it necessarily are the all the order blocks up here. These are sell orders. And so could it go to 117.18? Sure. But uh, it's more than likely going to have some trouble there. Let's go to a weekly time frame, see what that shows us. Okay, well, here, I, I take that back. Um, one of the things I really like is the weekly time frame, the 21 crossing the 50. OK, so I, you know, it could it could pull back around 80 here on this market uh, correction and then run higher. But we can see that it failed all through here. So, you know, the the hotter coins right now, uh, forgive the analogy, but I'm not even going to use it. So the, uh, you know, ETH, Bitcoin, Solana and um, even Chainlink is languishing. But when money kind of gets bored with Bitcoin and ETF uh, and ETH rather, you should see some flow into, but look at all that sell pressure on Litecoin. Yeah, it, it had a bit of a pump yesterday. Not sure, maybe that was some short covering. Maybe they, the shorts were lining up, thought it would roll over again. Uh, you never know. Uh, well, you can find that. You can dig around a bit and find that. But um, anyway, guys, that's all we have time for today. Uh, do go over to moonstream.io. If you're watching YouTube replay, uh, like the video, subscribe, and go to moonstream.io. You can get access to our free trader checklist, which I was showing you today, how to use our indicators. You can use it without the indicators on other TA stuff, just not nearly as good. Sign up for our crypto newsletter. It goes out every Monday. It's uh, no, the Bitcoin news, crypto news and aggregated throughout the uh, blockchain. Only the most interesting articles, so it's an easy, quick read. And of course, you can sign up for these classes to attend live by pushing on this button, clicking here at the bottom. There's also some other research reports like the five biggest mistakes most crypto makers, crypto investors make. It's hard to read and type and use your mouth at the same time, everyone. The five mistakes most crypto investors make. Also a report I did that originally was called Blood in the Streets back in the uh, the winter, December of 2022, uh, when we were in the doldrums of the bear market. So I've renamed it Past and Future for Bitcoin. I would read that. There's a lot of really good information in there. And um, also how I had bought my first Bitcoin at $20. Funny story. And how it turned into my, it turned into my now $70,000 happy hour, y'all. That's, uh, I don't like to think about that. And a cool little article about blockchain technology is you can also find us more about our services here uh, and uh, any one-on-one. -on -one. If there's, if any of you are kind of intimidated by all of the technology and all of this and would like some one-on-one -on -one help, I can working with clients both on creating dollar cost average optimal portfolios for you or doing coaching or both. Uh, or you can, again, grow, uh, join the M3 Active Trader, which is kind of like a group coaching program. So, all right, you guys. Uh, thank you, everyone. Try to keep it short. These things are, uh, they take forever to render when we go over an hour and a half. So, uh, cheers, everyone. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see you guys who are in M3. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, by the way, Mike will not, not be here for Retire Rich on Thursday. Uh, he's uh, getting a pass and uh, taking some time off. Okay. All right, everybody. Take care.